advanced modeling and visualization. Here are a list of what to do today. A series of lab exercises related to so-called advanced geometric modeling and visualization. Lab exercise one and two, something about geometric modeling in 3 dmx First one, how to control polygon, number of polygons, geometry. Second one, free form, some organic shape. Actually, we have reviewed this one before, but, but another review for, for today's geometric modeling. I'm going to let you know some free form functions features in 3D Max. Number three, four, five, they are something about mental ray as well as V-ray render techniques. How to reduce your render time using final gather map, cache reuse, as well as something about texture map. So today we are going to review diffuse texture map, bump map, displacement map, even cutout map in mental ray. Very powerful and effective mental ray specific visualization technique. The last one is some your design approach. Even if we are dealing with architectural building models, sometimes we need just our own individual universe. Your universe of this course can be a small office, can be a small building, no need to building design. I mean, you don't need to build entire things, okay? Because our focus today, actually our focus in this semester is design visualization, not modeling entire world, okay? So that's why I go back to geometric modeling and I like to bring your attention again for your concept visualization. Target target design is office, a small size office design. So you can make some office conceptual design and its modeling with mental ray or even V-ray visualization, okay? Where we are, we are on 11th week. Next week, we will have a midterm exam. And in your class website, okay? This is your class website, okay? Under your class website, of course, as always, lecture slides are placed. On the course data, please take a look this one. Sample digital design and visualization midterm exam. So you need to download this file. This is one single page. Next week, we will have four pages exam. Okay. But this is my example, question example. So you have to take a look at this example for look around what's going to be next midterm exam. Of course, our subject, entire course material, since we have reviewed the lecture. Anyway, this is one single page example, but you will be asked to submit four pages examination in 50 minutes, okay? Next week's the fourth hour, okay? After the lecture and the lab exercise next week, Next week, the lab exercise topic is animation making, okay? And then we're going to have the midterm exam. Okay, that's brief schedule where we are. But anyway, final project plan. Keep working on your final project. After next, after next week, probably in the lab exercise hours, we're going to tackle your individual final project subject as well as some individual developments in your 3D visualization techniques. Okay, as always, as I introduced you two weeks ago, final term project supposed to be something like this or some descriptions I show you using those examples. Need to take care of existing websites and award-winning works. And I request to you two submissions, one at least for photorealistic render, another one photorealistic or architectural, professional looking representation. Technically, I told you full HD, okay? Full HD means uh, 1920 pixel in widths, and its height going to be 
1080p, okay, 1080 pixel, huge, relatively, okay, it takes really long time. After render, you need to get some post processing by using Photoshop or something else. Anyway, it should be creative digital interior architecture image, various graphics tools, okay, photo based composition, and some design concept idea. It's not the scope of work for the final project, but that's why you can use your studio project, indiv individual design project, and so on. Okay. Okay, let's quickly review some additional design idea and concept visualization cases using idea design book as we reviewed it before. As you remember, this kind of idea design book published by AENC, it has its content category by using geometric shape. Tower and group, box geometry, polygon geometry, circle geometry, organic form geometry. Okay, what if you have some specific geometric idea for developing your design? If it's kind of sphere, polygon, or some circular shape, geometry, it should be on the, a, a certain type of geometric shape. So, under this category, now you need to know how to figure out your geometric plan design plan, concept visualization plan, okay? But it's not that simple. For convenience reason, this book has this category, but even in under box, it's not a simple box. It's very complicated geometry, totally based upon box shape. But combinations, applications, very complicated geometry you have, okay? So, Let's quickly review some more things, okay? This one is under the tower and, okay, take a look. Tower and group category. As you see, this is one of the high-rise building. Take a look, the visualization style and its concept. Usually, this kind of high-rise building has fire escaping zone under the law, okay? Even in Korea, fire code, building code, we have this kind of regulation. But this building has very uh, taller, sized area for this one and it's kind of green space similar to the area on the ground floors anyway the concept has some type of uh, grouped joining area in vertical way for the cloud and one kind of biomimic from the nature even urban skyscraper or building shapes geometry something like Something like that, okay? Vertically separated zoning plan and it displayed something like this visualization approach. Even if they are not totally photorealistic, anyway, in, even in this conceptual visualization stage, it shows amount of things about this design. How about this one? Zoom Lion headquarters plan. Actually, it has two different uh, design alternative First one has this kind of shape. Another one is something looking this. But in the same way, two twin towers connected by sort of very high rise bridge. And this one has the bridge structure like this. And the site plan, 3D view, also show, show you the conceptual representation for this building design. This one, another alternative has twin towers and connection using this kind of bridge structure on very, very high altitude in, in, in its shape. Okay, next example, take a look. In basic geometry, what is this? This is simplified box shape. Box shape is very modernized and efficient and easy to make building structure. That is why uh, uh, contemporary buildings are mostly looking this box shape. But there is another thing. Even if this one is on the box shape geometry, this one also has segments, polygonized structure. Take a look. In this scale, this is a simple box. But let's zoom in the structure. In this kind of human scale, 
I'm not sure the dimension, but probably uh, 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter. One single module has pyramid geometric shape extruded, okay? And this one covered by entire stacked layers, something like this. Eventually, the box geometry is looking very complicated and unique, not that simple, okay? So, in detailed geometry, in this case, this one has pyramid extruded shape, and this one has some circular shape. But basically, it has stacks of very typical box geometry, okay? So the final visualization, even if in conceptual level, the building geometry is simple, simplified by box shape, but thanks to this facade structure visualization, we can kind of preview the design, building facade design, and its effect visualization through this conceptual image. Let's take a look at another case. In this case, another very simplified geometry structure. There is a box, okay, cubic shape. But cubic shape is sort of boring and very commonly found structure. But let's take a look on the bottom side. There are four sphere, half dome sphere shapes. And they are sort of Boolean operated, okay? Box shape minus four half dome structure. And then you can find out this geometry and this is the inside of this indoor space for this provided by this geometry. And also take a look in detail level. In this scale, in this bigger scale, just simple geometric operation, box cube minus four half domes, but in detail level, we can find out some masonry bricks or some stacked geometric components we can find out. So, in your design development, when you are developing your ideas, you have to find out the fundamental geometric operation in higher, bigger scale, midterm, sorry, mid-level scale, mid-level perspective, you need to find out some type of geometric operation or shapes. And even in detail level, what I mean is the smaller scale dimension, you also find out some geometric operations or combinations. And their final combination going to make your final product, final design. And this approach successfully visualized, represented in this, very, even if they are very simplified diagram renders, anyway, we can easily figure out the design concept and the effect before the construction. Pop-up hotel, this is another modular structure. When I introduced you last time, cubic shape, just the box shape, and its stack can create anything because one single box module can be one single pixel. The combination of the pixel can be anything in 3D real world. In the similar way, this one is another geometric shape of module, okay? You can find out geometric size, dimension, and transportation method and application, something like that. I just loaded this elevation, facade view. As you see, one single unit has same scale to that module. So you can see and you can find out the, the height of this floor and take a look. Different floor has different visual colors and its effect, probably different functions. Anyway, even window structure can be uh, resembled exactly the same to that module. Let's take a look at another module house case named Instant House, and its subtitle is Instant Lung. Lung is human organ, human organ for breathing. So let's take a look why it's lung. Okay, here it is. This is human organ, lung. The main objective of human organ, lung is, I told you, breathing. 
So, this one shows you some, some uh, ventilation system from exterior to the indoor and probably some filtration and make, make that air to the better quality or something and two separate floors and take a look the sign here two means two people four means four people okay easily installed and removed even transported by others and series of elevation pictures with colored uh, infographic you can figure out the main objective and functionality of this building structure let's take a look another one named block why this is block in Korea especially in Seoul, there are amount of box-shaped apartments. We can figure out which apartment units can be divided in, even in elevation. But let's take a look at this one. Also looking cubic shape facade. One single module doesn't mean one single housing unit. Okay, Probably two or three, even four can be one single unit. But it doesn't matter actually. Anyway, it has blocks, group of blocks going to be one single block or another block, another unit, housing unit, okay? And one single block can be in horizontally, vertically stacked for making this total black. Take a look. They are all integrated, okay? Just one single block. But take a look. This is not one, one single box amount of extrusion, okay? Extracted geometry because of this structure, thanks to this structure. What is the result? We can find out this kind of green space even in between of those blocks. How about the rooftop space for the raw, raw roof area? Also, we find out some green space, okay? In between blocks, there are amount of this green space and even housing units also looking ordered and some sort of well-organized structure in terms of its shape. There is no curved lines, spears, circle shapes, but anyway, box geometry also can be stacked, reused, and create very modernized and ordered structure. Ordered structure simply means looking very stable, okay? Giving some stability to people. Next one, Busan Opera House example, also another box shape. But actually the intention of this box shape surface is media facade. But my point is not on this media facade today. Take a look, the bottom side of this box structure. What is this structure? Very primitive geometric shape from this bezel, okay? Ship. What kind of ship? Delivering amount of containers. Another concept, cloud and something floating rock. And this one, okay? Containers in, in Busan uh, piers, probably. And the geometric shape is looking very, very straightforward and easy to figure out. But the reason I, why I brought this one in this slide as an example is its representation style, visualization style is looking very professional and sort of well, well visualized, well made. Okay, that's why I brought this one. The concept is, I don't think it's very, uh, relatively good or effective. Iceberg, also this one has triangular shape geometry, not box shape or circular or even freeform shape. But let's take a look at this infographic. What this means, actually this one is looking like <coughs> site plan, okay? This one is looking like site plan, but the building geometry is not on top view, this one is 3D view, but even to site plan and take a look, 3D infographic diagram and 3D shape formation can be used and resolved into the site plan and some characters, 
visualization. In other words, this one is some type of hybrid combinations of various different types visualizations. Another one, do you find another one? This blue color shape also represents elevation. Okay? This building elevation patterns can be visualized in this type, top view, floor plan, okay, site plan. So this is something beyond industry standard. Industry standard means <coughs> conventional floor plan, elevation, axonometric, top view, and so on. This is something beyond conventional visualizations. Take a look at this infographic. How to make this triangular shape? This box shape has triangular shape because if we cut out one part, L shape simply implies triangular shape and they have axes. We can easily rotate 90 degree in certain angle and then we can get this triangular shape building geometry. So now this one can be explained, the derivation of geometry from that rectangle shape. Okay. Next one, another one is also triangular shape building geometry. We, we need to find out what is the special design features from this very boring and simple building exterior. It's looking nothing special, but let's take a look inside of this building, looking complicated. It's not easy to figure out the structure. But let's take a look at this concept diagram. To avoid too much sun rays from the southbound, building simply rotated and transformed into triangular shape. Internal structure also can be rotated. Okay? So very simple geometric combination gonna, gonna make this kind of fundamental geometric formation. Okay? Without this conceptual infographic, it's not easy, probably it's not easy to figure out. So try to make this one in 2D, 3D infographic or any type of geometric representation supposed to be provided to users, even in very early conceptual design. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Okay, this one is looking unique, special, creative, but it's not easy to figure out the concept. Let's take a look at this one. Really, really simple two visual representation. Black and white shape and it's inverted geometry. What's the difference? People outside of the building and this is typical structure of mosque. Mosque is a religious space. People bring into inside of the building. That's the conventional way but simply invert the structure. And the inside of this building, this mosque, still outside of the building. But as a result, people, they gonna feel like they are inside of the building. Let's take a look at this area. Obviously, it's outside, outdoor space. We can see environment, even sky, open to sky, but it's looking something like indoor space. Still, lots of indoor spaces also have. And let's take a look at this one. Very simple operation. Two rectangle shape, different angles operation can make this kind of overall uh, concept geometry. And this simple inverted idea gonna make really big changes from conventional mosque design to this building design. Okay? So this one also means very open to public, open to people. That is why the title for this one is Mosque for All. Very persuasive and reasonable, acceptable. Okay? Even by this single representation, you can visualize and argue. What is your design concept? Very straightforward. Okay? Okay, we reviewed lots of design cases, examples visualization things. Let's go back a little bit about theories we have walked through. 
Okay, 3D modeling and design representation. Actually, this is another type of review for the midterm exam. Okay, next week also we're going to take a look a little bit more about it. We have walked through in this semester. I told you in this semester we are not going to learn 3D Max technique. Okay, we are going to learn 3D modeling and visualization principles, mechanisms, rather than 3D Max interface. Even if in the lab exercise hours we are dealing with lots of 3D Max things, including today. Anyway, in the lecture, we our main subject is design computing, not 3D Max. Okay, that's my that's my point as always. Okay, let's get back a little bit about 3D modeling and design representation. What is this? This is conventional representation of design of the product. By using those plan views, we can recognize the 3D shape. We can imagine how this one is looking in real world 3D objects. But this is wireframe, okay? And axonometric. What is the difference between wireframe and axonometric? Axonometric is one of the industry standard. Wireframe is just one of computer-aided design and drafting visualization method. Okay? How about this one? Hidden line removal. What is next? <coughs> Shaded. Ray tracing. Shadow casting. At the end, photorealistic rendering. Okay? They are computer-aided design and drafting terms, not industry standard representations. Anyway, thanks to hidden line removal, we can make this kind of visualization. But in this wireframe, it's not easy to figure out which part is hidden and visualized. Anyway, thanks to computing tools and computing algorithms and computing technologies revolving, nowadays, we directly create design in 3D, okay? This is conventional approach. With a computer or even without computers, it doesn't matter. You can draw any type of industry standard views, okay? Top view, front view, elevation, section views, and so on. But thanks to 3D surface model or even solid model, we can make this kind of 3D model. This is not 3D model. This is not even 2D model. Okay? This is 2D drafting. Someone says th these are 2D model, but we usually say geometric model, computer model is always 3D. So how to extract front view, top view, elevation view? You can change the view and get a snapshot. That is why capturing some visualizations from the model, such as rendering, photorealistic rendering, architectural stylized view, even animation. Next week, lab exercise is going to be animation making. Anyway, all those visualizations are subject of capturing scenes from this 3D model. Okay? You don't need to draw again and again. Drawing. Drafting, they are all the subject of extraction, capturing, okay? That's why I show you this CAD history diagram. Okay, when people believe design is a drawing, we draw again and again. Fro floor plan, site plan, elevation, section, 3D views, perspective views, again and again, okay? So in the early period of computing, computated design, we used directly what we have drawn, which means computers just the tools of drawings. But people are smart. So someone thinks, OK, what if we make directly 3D in computer? That's why we invented surface-based 3D at first. So nowadays, even surface-based 3D is commonly used for what? For visualization. But for detailed 3D modeling and something advanced features, 
we need? We need to use solid model. Parametric model. What is parametric model? In editable poly, we always control number of polygons, moving polygons, controlling vertices, sub-geometry components. But in real world, no one thinks how many polygons for this product, how many vertices for this product. No one says something like this. We just say, okay, the radius of this minimal size is certain millimeter, and the maximum radius in this over shape going to be 20 millimeters, something like that. So-called parameters, geometric parameters, okay? That's why parametric modeling and even building information modeling, the most advanced one. So where we are in 3D Max, we are still in this second stage, okay? Next stages are the subject for the next time, next semester. I told you before, you have to separate 3D computer graphics and visualization theories and computing tools user interface, okay? Okay, when you learn 3D Max, you tend to stick to 3D Max user interface. And then, what's the result? It's not easy to learn. Very complicated and messy GUI interface too. So, more than 90% of students abandoned to learn 3D Max by themselves, simply because it's too complicated. But what if he or she separate theory and user interface issues? She or she can learn any 3D computer tools totally based upon by their own will, okay? Because we have lots of resources, references, website, blogs, YouTubes, and so on. So let's quickly look at interface. 3D Max, complicated interface, too many buttons, icons, options. Basically, typing, clicking, drag and drop, keystroke, it's so-called GUI, okay? Graphical user interface. Take a look at this diagram. Command line interface, GUI interface, NUI interface. Take a look at this dot line. This dot line shows you some part of command line interface, mostly GUI. That's current 3D Max interface. But what is your interface you use in your daily life? NUI for your smartphones, for your touchpad, GUI for your computer tools, general computer tools. Some gaps between those two separate, uh, what I mean is this dot line, most 3D computer graphics tool and your general tools. This game make, makes you hard to get 3D computer tools. Totally the matter of computer graphics interface, okay? user interface issue. We have laser scan, very easy to acquire existing geometry, only available for existing geometry. We also have photogrammetry, one to three to catch, or laser scan, photo-based capture, lots of advanced features we have, we use. But what is the actual reason? Why 3D computer graphics software is hard to learn? Without comprehending what are those, what are those? Ray tracing, global illumination, final gather, Bezier curve, pol what is polygon, mechanism of sweeping, something about camera and lens. What I mean is behind the technologies, mechanisms, theory, okay? Without understanding those things, learning 3D Max is same to memorizing the order of clicking buttons in hundreds of icons in messy GUI interface. That's why I told you to separate some principle behind the technologies, related relevant technologies and user interface issues. If you know, if you understand 
theories behind the technologies, Maya, Rhino, SketchUp, Digital Project, Rabbit, 3D Max, any type of 3D software, learning 3D software is the matter of learning user interface. Okay? Why? They all have same fundamentals, same background, the same technology. Okay? Totally same mechanism they have, basically. So that is why I want to say this one again. If you understand the logic, rather than the order of clicking buttons, you can learn any computer tools, 3D modeling tools. Even if it's very complicated tool, you can learn by using amount of user interface issues. That is why I want to tell you to separate user interface issues with behind the technologies, theories, and related issues. 3D geometric modeling, when you create some geometry, when you are dealing with some geometry, simply say in editable poly, what is your subject for control? This is box object. How to modify this box object? Sometimes we change width and height, depth, but what if you convert this one into editable poly? There is no way to control by parameters. You have to control polygons, edges, vertices, extrude, bevel, inset, delete, select, moving. Lots of sub-geometric components supposed to be subject of geometric modification. So that's, what, that's how we create model and modify the model creating an object and sometimes never-ending modification from that geometry. I told you we have very few ways of creating 3D. The first one is predefined object, primitive object, including this Utah teapot, sphere, box, cone, plane, cylindric shape, donut shape, lots of predefined pre objects. Sometimes this box shape can be converted into high-rise building. Sometimes this sphere can be converted into very complicated product, freeform shaped product. Okay, creating 3D object. First one is extrusion. Second one I told you was lathing, revolving. Third one is sweeping. But actually I also told you before this one is only one single way to create 3D, technically, because there is section profile and the definition of the path. What if the path is one direction, one axis? That is extrusion, okay? What if this path is exactly circle shape? That is revolving, okay? And preform, line, drawing in order to create sweeping geometry, something like this. And, and also there are more things I told you before. Skinning, certain type of morphing, that's one of the modifiers, not actual operation. But how about this one, Boolean operation. Actually, Boolean operation is the term of solid 3D model, not surface-based 3D model, okay? Technically, surface-based 3D doesn't have Boolean operation. But even SketchUp and 3D Max, they gonna show you how this kind of solid operation can be working even in surface-based 3D based upon their additional algorithm and functions. That is why we can use that. But you may experience lots of errors when you are learning Boolean operation, pro Boolean modifier in 3D Max, lots of errors, simply because it's not solid 3D. But in 3D, solid 3D model, you can do this. CSG means constructive solid geometry, okay? Constructive solid geometry means Boolean operation. 
Okay, another review, building information modeling. Okay, another preview, building information modeling. Last time, actually, I show you a brief preview in building information modeling approach. Let's take a look again with some visualization approaches, focusing on Autodesk Rabbit. Okay, it's building object-based modeling, not geometric modeling. What is the difference between building object-based modeling and geometry-based modeling? Okay, in terms of CAD history, I show you this process again and again. Building information modeling is totally based upon solid 3D, not surface-based 3D, okay? <laughs> And also it's parametric design based, parametric modeling mechanism equipped, and also building information modeling. In a nutshell, the main subject for Revit is building. So take a look. This is Revit, Revit interface. In the Revit interface, there is no lines, polygons, vertices, and so on. Okay? There is no geometry or geometry related objects. Instead, the universe of Revit is building or building groups. So, what is the building subcomponent here? Column, roof, window, door, walls. They are the subject and the component for the building. Modeling walls, columns, doors. Not points, lines, surfaces, polygons, and primitive shapes, revolving, rating, extrude, there are no such things, okay? A lot of predefined object family, a lot of predefined wall door window, that's the fun fundamental approach in this kind of modelers. In that case, what if you want to create your own door, your own windows wall, parameters, okay? Walls with this height, thickness, as well as material. <clears throat> The real world material can be assigned to your object. Each object geometry is parametrically editable. Okay? That's the fundamental approach. All objects have related each other. Parametric constraints. Rabbit knows wall has opening and doors or windows placed inside of that opening. Okay? It's solid 3D. There is no way to overlap wall and door object. It's not possible because it's solely the 3D, okay? In this Revit interface, take a look. This is so-called ribbon interface. Nowadays, 3D Max has same ribbon interface and one of the uh, freeform modeling today is we're going to use this kind of ribbon interface, but it's advanced, interactive, and some subject-oriented <coughs> menus, tools you can find out. In this mode, now we can find out some geometric controllers, handler, handlers as well. So this is the preview of the screenshot, Rabbit. Take a look. Architectural shaded view and external building view camera. <coughs> and even if it's monochrome, but architecturally meaningful and very effective visualization. Also, we have some flow-based separate geometry visualizations, a lot of design representation, visualization, specific tools, functions, capabilities already have. It's very powerful anyway. Last time I show you this one totally building project base. So that is why we need to open building project. After that, loading floor plan, or without pl floor plan, we can model wall object, and Rabbit knows whether this one is wall object or not. How about door object? Simply load the door object, which has 2D representation as well as 3D geometry with the amount of associated properties containing material, closure, Thickness, height, trim projection, with us, and some type of identity data, more data. Even manufacturer, even price data can be added 
in this door structure. So 2D, 3D representation, no problem. How about the windows? Windows representation in 2D and 3D, no problem. And stairwell object, components for interior finishes, furniture, layouts. We can download some predefined existing products as well as you can create your own design, your own furniture, your own decoration things. Okay? By using, okay, there are some geometric editors. Okay? You can draw lines or a circle over something like this. Anyway, they are not part of building component. They are just part of modification. Anyway, also there is flow object. Thanks to flow object, when you finish your design, Simply, we can copy, so-called smart copy, okay? Selection of the objects all together and smart copy. Smart copy, okay, next, after next week, subject for the lab exercise is Revit-based College, College of Human Ecology Building Modeling. And you're going to be asked to visualize in 3D Max by using that Revit geometry. Anyway, you're going to use Revit install after installation and some primitive use case, use scenario. Anyway, simply copy using smart copy and then we can finish up very easily, intuitively, quickly. And let's take a look at this render output. This render has been done by Revit. So, <clears throat> take a look. Autodesk Revit and Autodesk 3D Max, Autodesk product. NVIDIA Mental Ray is the default renderer in 3D Max as well as Revit. Revit has Mental Ray renderer as well, but actually totally different user interface. Not that powerful and intuitive compared to 3D Max. Anyway, Revit has render features and take a look this render output. It's looking also photorealistic. Another example. Another render by Mental Ray in Revit. All geometry building components modeled by Revit. Let's take a look. Kind of easy to use scenario. Interoperability between Revit and 3D Max. This is very common, okay? Let me show you. In Revit, you can easily make this interior components, wall structure, and this very simplified building structure. Okay, and this one can be easily transformed, transferred to 3D Max. They use Mental Ray. What is the main, main characteristic of Mental Ray? There is Autodesk material. Okay, so in Revit, all materials are already defined in Autodesk material. 3D Max also use Autodesk material, which means if you export by using file format FBX, all the material going to be available in 3D Max and vice versa. Okay, very powerful. So you need to assign some lights and modify some material or some environment, and then you can get this kind of architecturally, professionally looking, realistic render. Okay, this is one very famous and commonly found user scenario between Revit and 3D Max. This is one of your lab exercise subject next, after next week. This is render output from Revit and this is render model. Sorry, Revit model. Another example here, also photorealistic, totally rendered by Revit. Another Revit render example. But actually, what's the difference between the object's geometry in this Revit model and the 3D Max model? In 3D Max, all they are editable poly or some given geometry, meshes, okay? Collection of polygons. But in Revit, even one single spoon or one single fork or this dish, cups, candle, all they are object, candle object, 
lighting object, chair object, dining desk, dining table object, okay? All predefined. If there is no such design, you have to design by your own, okay? That's major difference between geometric modeler and building information modeling modeler. But, okay, we need to take account our reality. We need to go back to geometric modeling because, because of what? Because of design visualization. Sometimes, especially in early phase of design, you don't need to take care of upper floors, lower floors. You don't need to take care of detailed engineering aspect of windows or even floor material, whatever. What you need to do is visually effective clean, straightforward, clear visualization, okay? That's the main subject for this semester. That is why we are using surface-based 3D modeling by 3DMAX. In other words, you don't need to create ceiling structure or floor slab. Just the surface, another surface for ceiling or floor, that's enough. Even if, even if it's just a single surface, that's fine, okay? What we need to know is how to decorate that surface, how to put some visualization techniques on that surface. Okay, that's why we need to go back to geometric modeling. No need to be a smart model. It's a fake model, it's a virtual model, pseudo 3D model, okay? Let me show you one single scenario. This is lab exercise number six today. All you supposed to be submitting your own workspace design, your own office design, okay? For today's lab exercise number six. I'm gonna show you one single scenario, very simple scenario designed by me, okay? What's the first thing? What's the first thing you are working on this 3D Max concept visualization? I told you before, defining universe of this course first. Okay, okay. now I'm going to design an office, small size office. So, I don't need to build high-rise building. I only need one single box geometry. And I'm going to place my camera inside of that box and modify the inside of that box space, box geometry. Okay, so universe of this course for this design is very straightforward and clear. Next thing, geometric modeling. What is environment? What is universe? I told you, small size office, indoor office. So one single box is enough for environment making. What is the interior features? Of course, I need desks, chairs, columns, some display, or some decorative elements, whatever it is, I can make them or I can import them, okay? For the universe, planes, world, sky, outside view, box shape, and their iterative modification. How about interior features? To this sketch, I'm gonna show you one of the demonstrations, how to make freeform shaped world structure or ceiling structure in array. I'm gonna show you array stacked geometry in freeform shape. <clears throat> anyway, 2D sketch and 3D extrusion shell in order to make 3D geometry or directly making 3D or import, import geometry. Lots of existing 3D Max file, Sketcher file, any geometry you can import from Herman Miller website, Steelcase website, you can get professionally uh, made workstations and iterative modification. How about visualization, rendering? Material mapping using Autodesk material. But today's lab exercise topic is texture mapping, bump mapping, and displace, displacement mapping, as well as cutout mapping, okay? So a lot of predefined material and additional advanced texture mapping options. That's the subject for today. Okay, texture mapping, lightings, 
camera and the rendering scenes again and again until the image exactly what you want going to be created. Okay. The last stage, don't forget this one, even more important than the formal process, Photoshop or some other tools, decoration or some combination, composition, retouch. Okay. This single scenario is exactly I showed you before. I don't know how many of you are take account this process, but this is always of importance. Okay. Okay. Go back to my design. Okay. Here is my concept. My concept is media wall office. As you see, lots of media wall examples. And this is small size office for IT based design company. And it's kind of digital contents making website. They need to get feedback frequently from internet. That is why I want to make some windows display, wall display, or even media post. Okay. Digital communication media post connected to the network, touchpad device, and lots of digitalized things going to be decorated in, actually functioned in the office. Reference images, okay? Stepping on this screen, we can get interaction. It's computing interface. And those are media words, okay? Media post can be working like lighting structure as well as decorations. Some media world structure, it's looking some broadcasting company displays, but anyway, very powerful, visually effective in terms of its visualization. Okay, I told you, we don't need to build entire building, high rise building, just box shape is enough. But this one must be human scale. So in its height, probably 2.5 meters, five meters, Three meters, it's up to your decision, okay? Up to your dis uh, design. Anyway, single box, convert this one into editable poly. Delete one side or not, it's up to you. Probably this deletion, this side, you can go other side of the building or building core, elevators, restrooms, and other offices. That is why you can extract this one single side, okay? Anyway, they should be flipped. Usually this box can be visible outside of this box, not inside of this box. That is why we need to flip, okay? Three uh, cylindric shaped lights, photometric lights, and copy them, array them, placing camera. Especially you have to use ultra wide lens. 15 millimeters ultra wide lens. Why? You need to visualize your interior scene very spatially, okay, broadly, in order to see capture, in order to capture amount of field of view for your in interior space. Even if it's small space, if you use wide angle, ultra wide angle, it's going to be looking very professional. Given geometry can be imported, your geometric components can be modeled and windows or molding structure or floor structure, workstation structure, all they can be modified by your own geometric model. So this is camera view. Okay, how about this? Is this looking like indoor space? Not a inside of box, okay? Not an inside of box. Because we have very simplified post media post structure, camera, lighting, existing geometry, imported geometry, and window structure for display. So this is initial render scene. Okay, no material assigned, just given geometry. Even no ceiling structure or no lightings. But this is good starting point of visualization more lighting options for this visualization. This is only conceptual design. So instead of making details for this screen, I just placed this frame structure just for visualization specific purpose. And now it's screen. 
One of the subjects for today's lab exercise is texture mapping. So, given texture map, take a look. Now we have some texture map option, okay? And take a look, flow material. The flow material has Autodesk, one of the Autodesk flow material, looking very realistic, okay? It has a reflection and some glossiness and so on. So this kind of visualization effect and also material for this media post. Walls, ceilings, even this given geometry, it doesn't have any material assigned. But in early phase of design visualization, conceptually, it's looking OK. So this is sort of final visualization. And let me show you this render example. Let's take a look at this render example. In first screen, you can see this render output, even if it has no details, okay? Very roughly, quickly made visualization, but it's photorealistic. No Photoshop edited, but it's looking very fine-grained, simply because this is UD, okay? Amazingly high definition, high resolution image. It took four hours in my computer, in my desktop computer, in UD. Even if in this roughly made uh, conceptual visualization, it takes time because this one has photorealistic render environment. Take a look, this flow material, it has special effect, predefined by Autodesk people. And this stone structure also has that. This is one of the subjects for today, how to save time when you get this kind of render, okay? I'm gonna show you demonstration, saving at least 50% of the time, okay? Not four hours. How to reduce this, one, this render to two hours? That's another subject for today's lab exercise. Anyway, take a look at this detail. We need to find out this kind of quick, easy, intuitive visualization, but still it's looking photorealistic, okay? This is the lab exercise number six today. Another example, another example quickly made by me in the lab exercise, okay? I made this one in the lab exercise hours in 20, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, okay? So something like this, something like this is your subject for the lab exercise number six today. Because what? Because of what? Because even if there are some advanced features and advanced technologies, in reality, we are in surface-based 3D digital design and visualization. Exactly the course title literally means, okay? Okay, let's move to the lab exercise, okay?